Uh, Welcome to Oddball. Welcome to Indianapolis. Hey, we made it. All-Star Weekend. Charlotte Wilder, Amino Hazard. Charlotte, how, how do people know that we're in Indianapolis? Well, there's a sign back there that says oh. Indy in mm. the script they use for weddings. So I feel like it's pretty clear. I thought they were a big Temple of Doom fans. Hmm. Great times to be had yes. in Indianapolis, despite my intense desire to want to... I know, but we're not going to Amin because we're going to come to love this city. I've never been here, showed up at the airport, never seen so many parking lots in my life. There were all these street lights lighting up the parking lots for like a mile. I was like, is this an alien invasion? Did you see the, the basketball court? Yes, very cool. Very cool. I was shocked that no one else gave a damn. I gave a damn. I took a picture of it. I took video, but I thought everyone was going to whoop their oh, phone out. I took out. a video. Well, I mean, look, I'm just saying. I was like, oh, this is cool. And then I looked around, and everyone was just like, I'm trying to get the baggage claim. And I'm like, well. I guess. Also, no basketballs. No. I was ready to film myself playing basketball very poorly for everybody's enjoyment, but there were no basketballs. Liability issues. Can't have Charlotte out here dunking on people. Also, we did realize... We were like, why was the clock set to 2024? I thought it was the time. So, got great shows coming from you right here in Indianapolis. We've got so many guests. So many guests. <laughs> How many guests? So many so guests. So many guests. We'll let you know about them it's as a, the week it's progresses. It's a veritable dinner party here, I mean. All right, Charlotte. So, yeah. today's show, we got Bet the Show. Mm -hmm. It's a Bet the Show update. Yeah, we have to tell the people, Amin took a bet. And lost. And it didn't work out. Didn't work out because two teams couldn't score one extra bucket, you bastards. Uh, but also, I'm really excited about this. We yes. sat down with Mac McClung, who's defending his dunk contest title this year, and also playing in the Rising Stars uh, game. Challenge? Rising Stars? Whatever. The he's Rising a, Stars He's thing. a rising star and a true delight. Like, real sweetheart. But I want to start with things that happened last night in the mm -hmm. NBA. And one of the most bizarre things. I don't think I've ever remembered something like this happening. I certainly don't. Isaiah Stewart of the Detroit Pistons got in an altercation with Drew Eubanks in the tunnel hours before game time for Pistons were set to take on the Phoenix Suns yeah. in Phoenix. In my experience, NBA players, mm -hmm. when they fight like that's not based on something that happened on the court, one of two things. Mm -hmm. Gambling debt, woman like very very seldom will you find two guys who fought not because of an altercation on the court yeah and it was like he called my mother or he said my mom wears combat boots or whatever like it's never anything like that it's never like oh, i didn't like what you said about me on a podcast like, it's never that it's usually you owe me money mm -hmm. and typically for millionaires when you owe them some another millionaire money it's probably because you bet on something and mm -hmm. you lost or Stop talking to my, my lady. Okay. And it's so, not something like, oh, you took my parking spot. No, no, yeah, exactly. I was okay. like, hey, man, you yeah. cut me off on the yeah. way. Like, Do they know each other? That's the part that like, I don't I'm, get. Like, I don't. I could not There's pick. this Drew Eubank, this Australian guy, and then Isaiah Stewart on the Pistons yeah. hanging out in Detroit. It's like, what? I, I could not pick two more either. disparate <laughs> names in the NBA. Like I there's I pick any two like Ryan Archie Diacono and Jimmy Butler still I think still, there's more I of a, see it. I more see of a it connection more. Yeah. there than Isaiah Stewart and Drew Eubanks. Oh my god. Which again, you know, the funny thing is you think about these are two guys that most even NBA fans, if these guys walked in, they say, He's tall, he must play in the NBA, but wouldn't know who they are. No, definitely not. Eubanks, when I first, he started popping up and I was like, Eubanks, what's this guy's deal? And then I was like, oh, he's Australian. He's Australian. That's why his name is U. It sound, he's Eubanks. I can't yeah. think of a more Australian name. Eubanks. Well, no, well, <laughs> that's not an Australian accent. I don't know what you just did there. I have trouble with Australian accents. The other weird part about this is yeah. the Phoenix Suns came out with a statement immediately. A statement immediately, and they were like, we condone violence of any kind. The police are going to do their thing. And then he got arrested? He got arrested, arrested him? cited, and released on, like, in the same... I mean, I guess, like, if you punch somebody, because, but some it felt... Yeah, like, there, there is a part yeah. of that where it's like, 
what their NBA players are fighting. What do you mean arrested? Like that, yeah, isn't right. That, isn't the, that anything goes? Right. As long as it happens inside the arena. But it's not. It's like this guy just yeah. wound up and punched another guy in the face. So. Well, apparently they went chest to chest. Oh, first. sorry, chest. So that, and then and then the altercation happened. But yeah, so the Suns put out a statement, and Monty Williams, who is usually a very kind of Ian Keel, Ian Keel, Ian Keel, Ian Peel, Ian Peel, Ian Peel, Ian Peel, even Keeled. That's what I was trying to say. Yeah, Monty Williams, former coach of the Suns, current yes. coach of the Detroit Pistons. He he was like very came out very strongly like, hey Suns, that's not cool that you did that. Let the NBA do its investigation. Let the investigation happen, and you you didn't need to put out any sort of statement. There's something I mean about being angry about a statement is funny to me. I, I, oh, well, like I get it, yeah. mm. but it's like. The whole mechanisms, the whole dance of how do you frame things, and then people getting angry when one person did. It's yeah. just like this whole. Well, I think there's this. The, the, I'll tell you why. Yeah. Because there's a feeling of you're you you plan this. It's not an off the cuff. Hey, what do you think about the fight? Like ah, you know, violence is bad. Like right. someone just ran up on you and asked you something. And you say ah, oh, violence is bad. I condone it. Whatever. You're like yeah, dude. They asked me. But when you say a statement, like it's like. Everyone gather around, I have something to say. Um, violence, where's my camera? Here, violence, bad. Condone it. We right. condone it. Well, it's also- We don't condone it. It's condone- Condemn. We condemn, condemn it. it. Violence is bad, we condone it. Yeah. Amino has it. I do. There is also an aspect of owning the narrative about it, of the yeah. sons being like, we were wronged, we're gonna take this and make it a whole thing that we are now in control of mm -hmm. that puts the Pistons back on their heels, which I I guess I understand from the Suns' point of view why you would want to do that. The Pistons are but also the Pistons are like, we're already back on our heels, yeah. man. The guy like, have you watched our season? Yeah, it's not been good. I condone violence. <laughs> the other part about this I think is funny is, Charlotte, have you ever wanted to fight someone at work? Or yeah. in, in the workspace? Are you kidding me? Tell us the story. Every day, no. Oh, you don't have to say names. Just be like, you know, oh. there was a, a, a producer. I had a, I had a boss a who at my, my six-month review, or I don't even know if it was technically my boss, but it was yeah. someone that I was talking to, and he was like, you know, everybody here, yeah, like, you're doing great. Your numbers are the best we have, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And then he was like, but there are a lot of people who are mad that you have the title you have and that you're a woman doing this, so you got to keep proving yourself. Nice. And he did it with his feet up on the desk and his no hands way. behind his head. And I was like, oh, don't choose violence. But, nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Why do you ask? Oh no, because I like I have I've never wanted to get physical oh, with really? anyone, oh. <laughs> but I've had a lot of people that I'm like I either on purpose or like definitely it exuded out of me like hostility, mm -hmm. and there's a lot, but I'm, the one I'll pick is someone who overtly lied to me mm -hmm. about multiple things mm -hmm. and so I decided I was going to make this person as uncomfortable as possible in the workplace every time they were in my vicinity so if I walked in to the studio and you know walked past like the cubicles where all the, the you know, behind the scenes people worked or whatever mm -hmm. and I saw that person there I would literally beeline to where they were and be loud and be like hey what the f is going on here and then and then whoever there, it's like I go around the room of like, hey, what's going on, da da da, like very warmly. And like these people must have been so confused. Like, I mean, it usually just says hi. Now he's coming over, he's giving hugs and stuff. And then the last person I would talk to would be the person that this person was talking to. And I wouldn't, wouldn't acknowledge them. And I would just start talking directly to them. Like, hey, what's going on? I'd say, hey, Charlotte, how's it going? You did choose violence. And I was like, Charlotte, oh, how's Tyler doing? And, like, and I would just start saying all these like things to demonstrate these are my people, I know them. You know, you're just having like a chit chat. I know these people, I know them well. And just keep, and, hey, I've been meaning to talk to you about something and go like I'm gonna be long honest. until the person would literally just, just like meekly disappear. I did this for like straight up a year and a half at ESPN. It I would was. rather be punched in the face. <laughs> All right, it's not a Thursday show, Charlotte, without betting. Mm. Let's gamble, it's time for Bet the Show. But the show is sponsored by DraftKings. That's right, our dad. Stay tuned because you'll hear more about DraftKings and all that's offered throughout the show. DraftKings, the crown is yours. 
So we got a lot of different bets to go through here. Charlotte, oh, let's see. Uh, uh, All-star bets. Uh, but not think, really. What? We just have one that you have to answer for me. See, I was hoping no one would remember. I know, but... I, like, this this segment works a lot better when we take and make bets and nobody and remembers. And then nobody keeps track of yeah. them. Unfortunately, we're keeping track of them. You were wearing the appropriate color for this because it was a Valentine's Day bet that you took. Oh. You bet that less than three of the 26 teams who played last night would score under 100 points now, was in that their game. Three or, le- three or less or less than three? Less than three. Okay, so I needed, so you needed two, two teams. Two teams. Surely there's no way I, I missed that bet by a combined three total points. Oh, no, really? Because the Hawks lost to the Hornets 99 to 122. And then, I mean, the Kings beat the Nuggets in Denver 102 to 98. I think that one hurts my feelings more. Yeah, because those the teams, both those teams are high powered offensive teams that play up tempo. Yeah. Like, why would it be such a low scoring game? I don't know. Because maybe they had it out for you. Bastards. Now I have to pay off the bet. What's the, what was the wager? The wager is that you have to watch live the last Pistons game of the season. Oh, God. <sighs> you know what? I'm going to do it with you, though. Yeah? Yeah. I can't let you sit in that misery by yourself. Yeah. Maybe Isaiah Stewart will fight somebody. Anything could happen. Yeah. All right. Let's go into current wagers. How about that? Current bets. So, Charlotte. Yes. We've got the first bet is a team will break 200 points in the All-Star game on Sunday. Hmm. So, dating back to 1951, no All-Star game has ever seen a team score 200 points. But we got close. The West scored 196 in Toronto in 2016, and then 192 the following year in New Orleans, and that was the year where Steph Curry laid down on the ground right. as Giannis <laughs> went to go dunk. So and the wager is, are you willing to bet making 200 free throws? If you win, you get to choose someone on the oddball team or at Metal Arc Media to do 200 sit-ups. If you lose, we go to a basketball court and record you for however long it takes you to make 200 free throws. No. Like, I'm not taking that bet. Even There's no way. Even if I win, I, I would feel awful at, like, telling, well, I guess there only, there's one person I wouldn't feel awful. The person who wrote this, Matthew Kugler. I would, I would do this bet you, simply to make him do 200 sit-ups. Because you came up with it. Because he I came couldn't, up with it. I know right now, I'll tell you right now, no way, what is it, a, a bat's chance in hell a, a, when pigs fly? Sure. That's what I'll make, 200 free I also throw. don't like the chances of a bat. In okay, hell. so what else do we got? Made out of snow. <laughs> uh, the other bet is the All Star Game MVP will either be a Bucks player, mm-hmm. so Giannis or Dame, or a player on a California team: LeBron, Anthony Davis, Steph Curry, Paul George, or Kawhi Leonard. Although well, Kawhi's injury last night does leave the All Star Game slightly questionable. Right. The bet, the wager, excuse me, doing oddball for an entire week with an Anthony Davis unibrow. Oh. If you win, you don't have to do that. In fact, you can get your eyebrows done. Threading, waxing, whatever you prefer. I don't... I don't do anything in my eyebrows. Me neither do I. If you lose, you'll be looking all-star worthy with your new fake and ultra-furry unibrow for a week. These are too awful. These are... I, when did this the is stakes a rock get a hard so place? high? Usually it's like, you can order food or wear a Celtics jersey. And now it's or, like, or, or you can shave pistol. your head watch or kill pistol. your entire family. You gotta pick one. Oh my God. Um, all right, I'll do the unibrow one. Really? Yeah. But then if you win, you got to get I your eyebrows not, done. Oh, it's a choice, right? Is it? I don't know. It doesn't make it seem it's like not, it's it a choice. It can't be two punishments. <laughs> That's what it seems like. Both of them seem like two I'm punishments. I'm not getting my eyebrows done, but I will wear the unibrow if it's not, not for an entire week. I'm amending this. We have power in this situation. I'm taking back the locus of control. I'll wear it for one episode. Internal locus of control. She is a school term. Hmm. Our next guest needs no introduction. If you watched the All-Star Slam Dunk Contest last year, he was the winner. It's Mac McClung. And this year, as is by NBA law, whenever you win something, Mac, you got a a whole lot more responsibilities. You got to do more stuff. You got to (laughs) work harder. You got to do more stuff. So not only is he going to be competing and defending his title in the dunk contest, but he's also competing in the Rising Stars game, the Panini Rising Stars game, where he's going to be playing... For the G League squad, we have, as we've done for the last few years now, we have four squads. Three of them are comprised of NBA rookies and sophomores. The fourth one is of G League players, and he's going to be coached by Detlef Schrempf. 
And if you weren't already rooting for Mac, you want to now because Victory Insoles, V-K-T-R-Y, will be giving away $500,000 in custom insoles if Mac repeats as dunk champ. Ooh, Mac, a lot of pressure, Mac. A lot of, but that's, this is what, this is heavy that, uh, is the head that li- wears the crown, whatever the hell that, that thing goes. <laughs> so, Mac, let, let's start. I mean, you were not a stranger to celebrity of some sort. You were an internet sensation before you even played collegiate basketball. Did you find, like, after the dunk contest, it took to another level, or was it kind of, yeah, I'm kind of used to this amount of attention? After that night, um, it definitely changed my life forever. I think um, just the spotlight All Star Weekend has really just. Man, like it did, my life changed just going to the airport and things like that. It was it was truly an incredible night. And like you said, like I had about a week of enjoying it and like, man, this was awesome. And it was like, what are you going to do next year? You going to do it next year? I'm like, oh, man, I let me enjoy it a little longer. But it was truly a blessing that night. And yeah. Mac, who is the weirdest person you heard from? Like when you got when you got back from the dunk contest, was your phone just blowing up? I always love whenever there's a moment like that, asking people who the most surprising person they heard from was. There was some definitely surprising people. And I really hate like name out. I really hate. You don't have to name names. Just like give us a set, like a category, like your teacher from first grade. Like vice principal from middle school or something like that. (laughs) Oh, man, I don't even know. I remember I had to put my phone down and I turned off like um, all my notifications because like I felt bad not replying to people and it gave me anxiety. I was like, man, like this is a lot. So I just kind of I stopped. There was definitely like all the, you know, rappers and um, hoopers. That was really cool to connect with them and know they uh, supported what I did. So it was it was it was overall great. But I had to learn how to balance that a little bit. (laughs) Who are you most surprised to hear from? Meaning of those like famous ball players or famous artists, musicians, actors, whatever. Who was like, whoa, Denzel Washington hit me up? Like, who's the most surprising name? Yeah, no, Denzel did not hit me up. I, w- I wish he would have. <laughs> but um, I don't know, just all the rappers. I hate even name dropping people. I think, it, you know, DMs are kind of a private place maybe yeah. maybe no they're not but um wow we have about- found the last gentleman i mean yeah. mac mcclung <laughs> i dms respect. remained direct and not yeah. for public consumption what about in person though because obviously uh saturday night sunday night all-star weekend there's a lot of people around uh who is someone that you ran into in person who was like yo you know who i am that's pretty impressive i think the coolest was that was just like um the nba players because i you know i love basketball so much it was the you know, Giannis and all those guys showing me a lot of love and, you know, um, supporting me. And Shaq and I have known each other for a little while, but just him him being there and showing all the love he did was just like, oh, man, like I'm just a kid from this small old town. I know it's cliche, but it was it was incredible. Not anymore, Mac. You're a big deal. We've got to pay homage or homage or what. How, I don't know how you say that word. Me and I are just depends firing on, an all. You want to be there. fancy. Yeah, okay. We have to honor the dunk contests of the past. Um, Do you have an all-time favorite dunk? I think the Aaron Gordon and Zach Levine, just like, I think if they did those dunks and they weren't going against each other, they'd still be incredible. But them going against each other just made each dunk even better. So it was like, that. it's hard to like take those away from each other. I just think those two and those final rounds were just incredible. What's the first dunk contest that you remember watching as a kid? Definitely just highlights of the Dominique MJ, you know, maybe my dad put that on or somebody, uh, but just um, watching those two go at each other. Have you uh, been to Indianapolis before, Mac? I have never been. Amin has been. Um, and I want, are, are you familiar with the city at all? I've been there for the NCAA tournament. So uh, had a, mm. had a had a tough experience there losing in the second round. So hopefully we can, you know, have a better ending this time. Yeah, we'll rewrite the the story of Indianapolis for Mac McClung. <laughs> I hope so. I hope so. Mac, one of the things that I think is pretty impressive about you and your basketball career is you came you came out of the state of Virginia. A lot of great players that come out of Virginia. You both broke Allen Iverson's all time state scoring record, but also JJ Reddick's single game record. I know that certain other states are, are have like a very close knit brotherhood of guys for instance philadelphia players regardless of generation they all seem to keep in touch with one another is the same thing happening for virginia like does grant hill hitting you up is jj reddick or alan iverson or any of these other great virginia players do you guys ever like commune yeah so where i'm from is like the very end of virginia it's almost tennessee so it's like 
so far away from where all the good Virginia teams are that mm. um, kind of spaced me out. But Allen Iverson showed me a lot of love when I beat his record and my high school years, just bringing me to his game and meeting him and him just kind of showing a lot of love. So uh, one of my favorite players growing up. So that was probably the person I looked up to the most and was a really cool experience when I was in high school. Now, Mac, how do you prepare for a dunk contest? Like, are you going through and looking at old tape or are you just out there, you know, letting the artist inside of you take over and coming up with completely original stuff? Is it a mix of both? I I'm, I'm, can't even imagine how you prepare for a night like that. It's a lot of balance. I think, um, like you said, like last year, it was such a blessing, but it almost made it harder this year. I was like, <laughs> yeah. you know, the, the pressure's up a little bit, especially like you were saying with Victory, the partnership, like giving away $500,000 worth of insoles. If I win, if you go to victory.com, you can actually log in to be, you know, to be accepted for that. So there's just a lot of more pressure. But the biggest thing I do is um, I go try to research every dunk I can. And then I just go in the gym and start trying to make something up. So this year, I'm super excited. I hope I, my dunks are harder for me, but I hope I can make them. I think I have three dunks that have never been done in a contest before, but two of them, I don't think of ever anyone, I've never seen anybody use them. So hopefully I can make them and, and they go well. Wow. It's, it's funny, Charlotte. Uh, yeah. Tracy McGrady tells a story about the dunk contest with Vince Carter, the Vince Carter one. Uh -huh. And Vince apparently didn't practice any of them, didn't try any of them. He just went out there. Mm, let me try doing this one. <laughs> and tra that's why Tracy said he didn't want to. He didn't want to do it. They he forced him to do it. Like Vince forced him, say you have to do it because he knew like this guy's gonna win. I'm curious though, Mac, have you gotten to watch the other guys dunk? And do you have any kind of ideas of, I guess, like cool dunks you've seen them do? Man, yeah, I mean. Just like seeing them get selected and, you know, following these guys throughout their high school years, kind of being fans of them and rooting for them, like seeing these guys, they they have some incredible stuff to all of them, really. You know, I was watching Jalen Brown's mixtape when I was younger and his incredible yeah. athleticism. Jacob Toppin, I mean, that kid's incredible. You're going to see he's got some stuff that's just unreal. And then Hami. I feel like he's a gamer, man. He's got that swag and coolness. It's like I feel like all these guys have a great chance of winning it. Right. So, OK, so let me ask you this, because uh, me and my friends have had this argument for a long time. The dunk contest is probably, I would say, 85 percent the dunk. Right. You got to do something cool. But there's a 15 percent there that's showmanship. Right. How much do you pay attention to or like give thought to, OK, when I do the dunk afterwards, I got to do this. I think I think. uh I, one thing I try to do is really make it about the dunk, maybe even a little more. And then when it comes to the showmanship, like, I think it has to be genuine. Like, I think it'll be genuine if I make these dunks this year. And that's the plan is <laughs> I will be genuinely excited if they went in. So I'll be genuinely happy and it will, it will not, I won't be faking it. We, 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 we did talk a lot about the, the dunking, but the rising stars challenge, this is a big deal as well, because first of all, it's actual basketball as opposed to just, kind of, you know, uh, a, something that's judged by judges and scorecards. Now, this is points on the board and you're scoring and you're winning. How important, I guess, is it to you to show out in the Rising Stars Challenge? Yeah, I mean, I'm definitely coming to compete, but that's everywhere I go. Like, you know, this is my third year. I've been up a little bit, down a lot. Like, I've, I'm just playing. I play basketball because I love it. And it's an, I understand and I'm aware that it's an important situation for me, but I'm just going to play how I always do. Just have fun and, and compete. Is that what it's all about for you, Mac? Because obviously, you know, with G League contracts and, and NBA and you mentioned the ups and downs, I can imagine that that might have been a little bit of a roller coaster. What what sort of keeps you motivated or, or, or what's your your goal? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, it's not it's not you know, black and white when it comes to like, oh, if you're good enough, you play in the NBA, or if you played this well in the G League, you can play in the NBA. Like, so I stopped really letting any level of basketball determine my happiness or, you know, why I play. I play the game because I genuinely love the game. I love it so much. And I really believe in myself to the fact that I can play in the NBA. I'm, I'm very strong belief with that, but it's like, um, it's all in God's time. I really just try to let God work it out and just enjoy myself because I don't want to be I don't want to get there and be like, oh, I can be happy now. You know what I mean? Like I, yeah. I'm happy at, at this point in my life as well. 
So Charlotte Mac is averaging just under 25 points a game, five rebounds and seven assists for the Osceola Magic to the Orlando Magic G League affiliate. Mac, in your opinion, if, if you were doing a sales pitch right now for yourself, for NBA teams, Mac McClung brings what to the table as an NBA player? Yeah, I mean, I'd first say I'm a winner. I think I could help any team win in a lot of in a lot of facets with my like athleticism or like whatever role I needed to be put in. It's to pass, to compete, just pick up people 94 feet, or it's to make shots. Like you, I feel like you can fill me in where you want me to. So I'm a competitor and a winner at first. And I think you know, you know, G League Championship last year, and when I got my opportunity at the end of the year with Philadelphia, I, I feel like I made the most of it. It's just. That's the biggest thing. If you, I, I'm a winner. I would say that's the number one thing. One last question for you, Mac, and I can't imagine you'll answer this, but who do you think is your biggest competition? Who's who's the biggest threat this year in the dunk contest for you? Well, yeah, I mean, I've been thinking about you know this year's contest, and like I said earlier, I mean, all the people don't understand. All these guys are incredible. Like I've seen their dunks since I was in high school. Like I don't think anybody should be an underdog or taken lightly at all. I'm, 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 I'll say it for you. Jaime Hawkins should be an underdog taken lightly. <laughs> because I mean, he's a good player. He's a good player. I think he's been one of the best rookies. But when they said Jaime Hawkins in the dunk contest, I'm like, I've seen them other three guys jump. I haven't seen Hawkins jump like that. So I'll yeah. answer the question as far as the least threatening. <laughs> nah, you got you to gotta go watch his, his high school dunk contest in L.A. He beat so many incredible dunkers. He... I think I think you need to go maybe check out his YouTube and see what he does. A- okay, I mean you're not familiar. Yeah. I wasn't I'm familiar fa- with your game. I wasn't familiar with his work, his his pre NBA <laughs> dunk work. But I, I'll go back and I'll pull up the YouTube to figure it out. Mac, this is a this is sort of a throwback. But when you were um, a freshman at Georgetown, I sent you a DM. Spe- I'm oh. I'm outing my own DMs here. <laughs> I sent you a DM on Twitter saying, you know, I'd love to write about you because I'd followed your high school career thought it was so cool that you were starting out in your college career and you were so great. You were like, yeah, sure. Let's do it. And then I got a very strongly worded email from Georgetown PR being like, Hey, freshmen don't talk to media. So I'm just thrilled that you and I are finally able to chat. Um, and, and thank you for joining us. It's, it's a long time coming now. I thought you would lead with that. <laughs> well, you led. So I was like, let's save it for the end. No, look well, at the universe. That's how it works. We, we found our way for sure. We, we sure did. His name is Mac McClung. He's with us on behalf of Victory. Remember, go to VKTRY.com to enter to win uh, one of these custom insoles if Mac McClung wins the dunk contest. Mac, have fun in the Rising Stars game and good luck in the dunk contest. Appreciate you guys' time. Thank you very much. Thanks for watching Oddball. I think I have a little spittle coming down the corner of my mouth. You definitely do. Yeah.